speaking of religious kooks, we go to Rick Perry, uh, who's got a couple of unique reasons why uh, he wants to stand with Israel. Actually, I'm going to start with clip seven here, because he just gets right to the point here, as he's talking to several right-wing uh, Jewish leaders, even though one of them is a Democratic assemblyman in New York, uh, and also an Israeli is in the group as well. Here's Rick Perry. Well, obviously, Israel is our oldest and most stable uh, democratic ally in that region. Uh, that, is, that is what this is about. I also, as a Christian, uh, have a, uh, a clear uh, directive uh, to support Israel. So uh, from my perspective, it's pretty easy, uh, both as uh, an American uh, and as a Christian, uh, I am going to stand with Israel. Can you imagine, I mean, how much the country has changed? Imagine if Kennedy came up uh, during his presidential run and said, uh, it is my directive as part of being a Catholic that I will take my orders from the uh, Vatican. Uh, I will listen to the Pope. It's part of my faith. That's it. You like me. He would have gotten slaughtered. He would have gotten run out of the country. He, he would have had 0% chance of winning. Now Rick Perry comes in and says, well, it's my directive to support Israel because that's my interpretation of the Bible or my religious leader's interpretation of the Bible. By the way, he doesn't tell you the second part. You know what happens after they support Israel and Israel, you know, takes the Temple Mount and destroys the mosque, etc.? We have Armageddon, where almost everyone dies. Where almost all of the Jews die. Only 144,000 survive, and they have to convert to Christianity. Oh, he didn't tell you that part of his faith, right? But it's absolutely true. He says, my faith is to make sure that I support Israel in the short term and make sure that they are destroyed in the long term. Oh, he left that part out of the speech. How do you like his faith now? And second of all, can you imagine if in present day somebody came up, like Mitt Romney came up and said, uh, it's part of my faith that I have to take orders from the Mormon leader Moroni or whoever he is. And that's, so that's the directive I have. Or, if, now this is funny, if a Muslim leader, political leader came up and was running for president and said, well obviously I take my orders from Mecca. That's my faith. What do you think his chance of success would be? Look, they missed the whole point of the country. Separation of church and state. It's in the First Amendment. We all have a religious freedom. You cannot impose your religion on us. And this guy's running for president. He says, yeah, I'll be commander in chief and rule according to my interpretation of the Bible. That's it. And hence, I will favor some nations over others. I will be unfair if it needs to be. Uh, Palestinians, <laughs> what name so? He finds them totally irrelevant. He thinks it's wrong to be even handed. Let me give you more clips. Uh, let's go to clip eight here. The American people are for Israel. We may have an administration uh, that has a, uh, a different view of, of Israel, but the American people are for Israel. So uh, I hope you will tell the uh, people of Israel that help is on the way. <laughs> yeah, help is on the way. Uh, don't worry, all you right-wingers in Israel, we're going to do whatever uh, your crazy leaders want. Uh, progressive Israelis, who cares? Moderate Israelis, you don't get peace. I don't give a damn. I'm just going to do it because I, I can't wait for Armageddon. That's what my Bible tells me. And he says, of course, and uh, imagine, so remember when they gave uh, flack to Nancy Pelosi for going to Syria? They're like, how dare you talk to a foreign leader and say what our policy is when we have the president of the United States? Bow your head. Now, Rick Perry's like, president, ignore what he says. He, he doesn't speak for any of us. Just let me, a potential candidate, tell you guys what our real policy is going to be. Okay? Talk about undermining the president, but he doesn't give a damn. Now, let's go to clip nine. If the Palestinians do declare statehood, would you support the Israelis taking steps as sanctions against the PA? Well, I think there are a number of things that uh, we should do if the UN does, in fact, uh, vote to uh, allow statehood. Uh, in direct conflict with the Oslo Accords. One of those is obviously uh, having the United States send a clear message to the UN that we're not going to support you with our dollars anymore. Uh, so do you understand that? You know that most of the dollars that go to the Palestinian Authority is for security, so they can stop terrorism. That is why a lot of Israelis, including Netanyahu, have said to even Republican politicians, hey, you know what? I'm not sure we want to cut that funding. That might be counterproductive. But here, Rick Perry doesn't give a damn. He says, oh, yeah, let's cut the funding of the Palestinian Authority. That'll be awesome. Uh, other uh, suggestions he had was for shutting down the Palestinian Liber Liberation Organization office in Washington, so basically cutting off diplomatic ties. Uh, should uh, they continue building in the West Bank? He says, absolutely. <laughs> Impediment to peace. <laughs> Rick Perry doesn't want peace. He wants Armageddon. 
So, of course, he doesn't mind if uh, Israel keeps building in the West Bank. And then, by the way, he says, of course, we should also move our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which is uh, another thing that would cre create more and more conflict. But Perry doesn't mind the conflict as long as it's those people over there dying and not him. He's e extremely happy about it. So, and by the way, what do the Palestinians get in return for any of this? Nothing. Here's their so he's, here's the solution to Palestine. <laughs> Go pound sand. I don't give a damn about you.